And hello, everyone. Welcome, my Ozark friends. Good to see everyone here today. We thought we'd stop by and uh, just kind of give some little updates what's going on here at Ozark's history and what's taking place and what's happening. Uh, first of all, I want to say again, thank you so much for stopping by and visiting us today at Ozark's history. We're going to have a great time. We have a lot of little things to tick through today, and we're going to take a look at all the different little projects that we've done in the past. Uh, we're going to answer some questions. We've got some questions coming in, and I've got some answers, I hope, that uh, we can have fun with. And uh, so we're going we're gonna to do that today and have fun with that. Uh, first of all, I want to say thank you to those who are subscribing, going down here at the bottom of the screen and smashing the like and, and subscribe button. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We truly appreciate it. And we're going to head right on into our first question. Our first question is, who is the lady in the picture? A lot of times here on the side, I will have a picture of a, a little lady. This little lady is right here. And this lady, if you can see that here, this is my great grandmother. She is a pioneer here in Baxter County, Arkansas. Um, she was Molly or Mary. Originally, her name is Mary Gherkin, a, another name, Mary, Mary is her Christian name. Another name that she used was Molly around home. So the family called her Molly. So Mary and Molly are interchangeable. So this is Molly Gherkin, and she married my great grandfather, Franklin McNeil. So this turns out to be Molly Gherkin, maiden name. McNeil. So who's the lady? This is my great grandmother. And uh, so sweet lady. I never got to meet her, but I hear uh, family stories. And uh, let's see one of the things. Oh, yes. So anything happened, she would look at somebody and her phrase people a lot of old timers had a certain phrase they would use. We I, I still have Ozark phrases. I would say, Oh, shoot. So her phrase was Aw, oh, Shaw. And so uh, this is Miss Molly. She was born here in Baxter County. Her folks came from Bullock County, Kentucky in 1876. So this is Miss Molly, Grandma Molly. And so that was the question. I've, I've got more questions on, on her picture than anything else. And so there, there it is. It's a great grandmother. Sometimes, hmm, let's see. Ah, here we go. I will have this picture up. Got a kind of a glare here. This is my grandmother, Eunice McNeil. And she married a man named Mac Anderson. And so this is Eunice Anderson. So this is my great, this is my grandmother, or we would always call her Granny, Granny Anderson. And so sometimes you'll see her picture sitting here to the side. This picture, she was born in 1906. And so this is taken the latter part of the year in 1906. This is her baby picture. I don't have it right now, but I have a digital picture that I have colorized and animated. And one of these times I'll just show you the animation of her picture. And it's, it's pretty cool that uh, they have, we have software now that, uh, um, we can actually use to animate someone's picture. Um, I don't suggest doing that on someone that has passed away that you're very close to. Um, unless your heart's ready for it. Sometimes it'll kind of mess with your heart. Uh, I've done other pictures of family members and, um, <laughs> it's nice to see them all colorized and it's nice to see them looking at you and their eyes blinking but sometimes it can disturb your heart so i'll just leave that there so i want to go ahead and dive into some other things that uh, i want to show you here on ozarks history um, these are the languages that uh, we are now using and doing here on ozarks history we are doing 146 different languages. And those languages, how are we doing those languages? They're not audible, but they are in closed caption. So if you go down below 
hmm, down here, you're going to see a CC on our little screen. That's for closed caption. If English is not your second, is not your first language, it's your second language, uh, I would go ahead and suggest click the CC and finding the language that you're comfortable with. Um, I'm really big into closed captioning for two reasons. Reason number one, I am a teacher and I teach students in China to speak English. And I know sometimes English as a second language is not the easiest. Sometimes I will say things that do not make sense. What happens after I finish the videos, I will go back and re-edit every video, and I'm working on that right now for the past videos, making sure the English grammar is correct so it will translate into your language that you naturally speak. And so that will be on the closed caption. And these are a little bit, these are the languages, some of the languages, that's not all 146, but that's a good, that's a good batch that we have right there. And so, and then we have the closed caption. The other reason that I do the closed caption is that I've had hearing loss. I wear hearing aids. Well, I should wear hearing aids most of the time. I don't. I actually enjoy the quietness many times, but I am hearing impaired. And so when I am watching a video, sometimes I'm not catching everything. And it's really nice to have the closed captions down below. That's why I'm very big on closed captioning. And so we're taking the closed captioning from English and then we're getting it translated into different, all these different languages. So I'm very adamant uh, about closed captioning. It's something that's dear to my heart, um, just for context. And in the future, someone's wanting to know what I actually said. <laughs> and sometimes my Ozark accent kind of overrides my English grammar, or English language. And so I do go back and make sure everything is translatable uh, also into other languages. So there it is, hearing impaired, closed captioning, uh, English as a second language, closed captioning, so you can find your language that you're comfortable with. The next thing I wanna dive into is that we have actually been working on different cemeteries and we have have questions, we've had people coming in, uh, sending messages, uh, most of them have been emails and we do have our email down below in our video. Uh, so the video is right here is our video. And then down below we have uh, our email address. I wanna go into, and I've talked about this. So welcome to class. This is history class and families to a community. And so we're gonna transfer having a family into a community. And so communities are very essential in pioneering. And so we can have a family living out in the wilderness, uh, but it's very hard to survive as just an entity by yourself, as a family by yourself. So these families come together and build a community. And here's, here's, your, here's our class here in history. So here we go. We have for a community, what makes up a community? And here's kind of the base level that we have. We have a general store. In that general store, we're going to have a post office. A lot of times the general store and the post office are interchangeable because the post office is in a general store. You can have a couple general stores as the community grows, but we're just going to go with the post office and the general store. That Those are essential for communication for outside of the community to other communities and then the general store to purchase your supplies. In the wilderness, you know, you can't here in the Ozarks, you can be pretty self-sufficient, but it's always nice to, to have a store nearby so you can get at least your salt, your coffee, uh, so things like that. Uh, actually in the community it built, built up and you can start having other things added besides the general store, but the general store is essential. You can have a grist mill to grind your flour and your corn. That's pretty essential to a community, but it's not needful or an absolute for a very primitive community because you can take your corn and you can take your uh, your wheat and make flour with, you can pound out and make your own uh, wheat, uh, your flour and your cornmeal. It's hard. If you don't have a grist mill, you end up traveling to find a grist mill. But with all the creeks and the rivers in the Ozarks, it was pretty easy to 
uh, fine grist mills popping up along the way. With those grist mills, you can have also sawmills. The other thing that I want to go and tap into, we have a school and a church. I should have maybe put those two together and put a slash, but oh, they're good. let's put them separately. Um, you have school for the education of the kids, but actually what actually took place, you're going to have a church, and that church is going to be substitute as a school. And so these two can uh, go back and forth, a church and a school. Um, today we have something that people are really fond of is separation in church and state. In Ozark's history, there wasn't really a separation between the church and public school because it, it, the public school took place into a church building and it, it, it worked back and forth. The last thing that I want to really hammer into as part of a community is the cemetery. The cemetery is very important for families and communities. The reason I'm saying this is because, and I've, I've mentioned this before, a cemetery reflects the community. A cemetery is a community. Uh, you have a community of the dead, but that community of the cemetery shows how that community was integrated together because you're going to bury those who are closely associated with each other. You're going to bury family members together. Or if you have a black sheep of the family, you're going to, going to bury him with the rest of the family in the plot. You're going to bury him outside the cemetery. You're going to bury them somewhere else. This, this occurs. Um, I have family members who were um, Confederate soldiers, and they were very loyal to the South. But then there were some other family members uh, that changed loyalties from the South to the North. Uh, they were not buried some of them in Tennessee were buried in a different cemetery. So they were just kind of like divorced from the family. <laughs> so <laughs> there we go. Um, so they were ousted from the community. Some of those family members did not stay in that community. They lived in a different community or they lived in a different state. And that's what happened to one strand of my family, the Anderson family. Uh, they were in Jackson County, Tennessee. Um, part of my family, they were southern they were confederate uh, they turned loyalties uh, we sometimes will use the phrase it's in the past was they turned blue uh, so they turned from confederate gray to blue they eventually ended up leaving tennessee and they came to missouri and in ozark county missouri um, it was highly populated with republican union soldiers um, so my family came from Jackson County, Tennessee to Ozark County, Missouri, that section of my family. I also had other family members here that were very uh, loyal to the South. And I sometimes wonder how those family members, you know, if they ever met each other, what the interchange would be. <laughs> and so the, the cemetery reflects the community. It reflects what part of the community it can, it reflects family association it reflects business associations it reflects community associations um, if you have community civic groups like the masons or eastern star uh, it's going to reflect that group if they're woodmen of the world which is another fraternal group it's going to reflect that in that cemetery that's a community those are community associations then you're going to also have family members that are buried there that uh, not just family members, you're going to have people buried there of the same religious doctrine. And so there might be a cluster of families that were all Methodist or Baptist, and they're going to be buried by the church that may be a Methodist church, maybe a Baptist church, and they're going to be buried in a cemetery right by that church. And so you can have a church, a school, and you can have a cemetery right by it or very close by it. In that association so i believe cemeteries are a integral part of a community because it reflects the community's uh, condition association uh, how it functioned who's there and who is not there it the cemetery helps answer questions it also brings about more questions how did that actually work and so 
we have family to a community, general store, post office, school, church, and last of all, we have a cemetery. Um, so let's go ahead. The other question I've, I've been getting in comments, not so many questions, it's actually been comments. It has to do with Ozark family names. There's different ways to spell names as you're going through the history records. Uh, my last name is Anderson. There's a few different ways to spell that. Uh, here in the Ozarks, we have two families that are very prominent, and those prominent families happen to be the Talbert and the Yoakums. There are different ways, and I mentioned this on, the see, I was at the Talbert Cemetery. Okay, I got to say one thing. I've had people, a couple of people ask me a question. It only said Talbert on the sign, but also locally, it's known as the Talbert Casey Cemetery. I just kept babbling off Casey, and there's no, there's no sign that says... <laughs> Casey there on the cemetery, but it's the Talbert Casey Cemetery or the Talbert Cemetery. Anyway, so we have the Talberts and we have the Yoakums. And so I'm going to go ahead and pull this up large screen so we can see that. And there's different ways of spelling Talbert, T-A-L-B-U-R-T. I'm not going to go list that through there, but you can see that here on the, uh, the screen of the Ozark family names. And then the Yoakum. Uh, Yoakum's actually are a little bit more prominent than the Talberts. Talberts are really prominent in Baxter and Marion County uh, of this area, a little bit in Fulton County in Arkansas, but we have the Talberts. Then we have the Yokums. The Yokums are spread, oh my goodness, they are spread all over the Ozarks. Um, I used to work, uh, do some farm work, um, get called every so often for a Mr. Yokum in Ozark County, same family of Yokums. Um, so we have Yokums in Ozark County. We have them in Taney County that I know of, Christian County. Let's drop south. We have them in some in Boone County, Arkansas. We have them in Marion County, Arkansas. We have them in Baxter County. And then I found some records of there's actually in Yokums in um, Fulton County. So they're, they're kind of spread out around here. So they're very prominent um, throughout the Ozarks on our family names here. The next thing I want to go ahead, uh, Schoolcraft in the Ozarks. I've got a lot of comments. I, I'm amazed at how many people really like these videos. Um, these are just so fun to do. I this this I will just tell you this is one of the, my favorite videos right here, Schoolcraft in the Ozarks, because I went down and filmed it down in front of my childhood home. And if you watch this video, I'm driving down into the valley on the left-hand side. There's a little, there's a gray house down in the valley by itself before I get to the cemetery. That is my childhood home. And so that's, and then I would go down there and start going down through the swamp, the bog, uh, the slough, and have some fun and just start rattling off. And how I have a blast down there. Um, by the end of the afternoon, I made me homesick. I mean, I'm there, but I'm homesick. I I wanted to, um, I wanted to stay longer. I've I've got to, so I've got some great memories. I've I've written, I've journaled and written about some things on what happened down on that creek, and I got some really fond memories. Really love that down there. And one of the memories I talk about on this right here would be this slide is memories from Lick Creek underwater exploration. Uh, a lot of hits on this video here, but I will tell you, I have had some people just had some fits on this one right here. It's not possible. Let me tell you how this is possible. I did not go down and lay down on the very bottom. If you look right here, let me just throw up this image here. You will see the bluff right here, right underneath the bluff. There is a little rock outcropping that comes in there. I would go down there and my head would be underwater about a foot or so. And I would have my goggles on and I would be breathing through that tube. I do realize if you go down seven foot breathing through a tube, you're going to have the water pressure pushing against your chest and you're not going to be able to breathe. It's going to be very shallow breaths. How do I know it's very shallow breaths? Because I experienced that. <laughs> and so I figured out about air pressure at a young age and didn't realize it till I got in the Air Force what was really going on. But it is possible to go underneath water for a foot or so and just check out the things swimming around. One, I remember 
I will just tell you this. One time I'm sitting down there on this bluff underneath the water with the hose in my mouth. Just I'm probably about a foot underneath the water and it got a rock on my lap holding me under. And I'm sitting there and of all of a sudden, oh my goodness, I got to take these headphones off. They are getting hot. I believe I, I'm just good right here. I'm sitting there and then all of a sudden a, a water moccasin swims right by me, right in front of me about two feet. And I'm thinking I need to be very still. And then that water moccasin comes back and just kind of hovers there on the water thinking, oh my goodness, what have I done? <laughs> when that water moccasin swam away, I got out of there. I, I, it's time to move. I'm moving. And so it's, it's a little snaky in that area anyway, but boy, it was my favorite hole. Right up from that hole, there's a place, there's a big rock. It's kind of two big rocks, actually, that kind of come together. Uh, as a kid, we, we called that area the big rock. Love the big rock. Yeah. And so um, how, many, how much, oh, this is a really good one. Had a lot of fun with this one. Had some great comments. How many, how much can one picture hold? And so I'm going through my Corps of Engineer pictures that we've digitally scanned. One picture, so much history. We came through and scanned and got all these different types of burials. We have our comb um, burial here, which looks like a little pup tent. If you need to go back through there, take a look at that one. That's a really fun one to do. And then here's the other one we, we did with the Talbert Cemetery. And that uh, it's in the subdivision of all places. This is in the subdivision. And I heard a story today that was told to me that um, when they were putting in the subdivision, they were getting ready to take, and there's a road that goes right by the Casey Cemetery. And I've, if you look in the video, you can see the road there. They actually, apparently there was, that road was going to veer off through the cemetery. And there, there was a lady that lived down by there. Um, and she came out and gave them what for. She told them how the cow ate the cabbage and everything else. And basically she saved that cemetery. Um, so yay for her. Yay for those people who stand up and <laughs> said, that's enough. You're not going to plow through this. And, you know, it's really hard on that part of that cemetery. There are a lot of field stones in there. You couldn't see them all right now um, in the cemetery, but underneath the leaves, there are a lot of field stones. And when that gets cleaned out every year, you can see all those field stones. And um, I've got a friend I talked with today, Mike. Um, believe there are some people who were former slaves in that cemetery, in that area. Um, so to find and record where they are at, it's going to be next to difficult or impossible. I'm not going to say impossible. Just Let's just put it as next to difficult. Um to find those people there who uh, are not marked. And even if they were not in slavery, there's just so many field stones, which was a common thing. And families would just go to these cemeteries and put a field stone there, and they knew who was at each field stone. But the memory of that, it's institutional memory of that cemetery, fades away as generations pass on and pass on. And then we end up with a cemetery full of field stones and rocks with very few monuments that have names etched in them and that's that's sad that just kind of hurts <laughs> it just it hurts a lot a um, couple things are coming up i just want to mention really quick we have the sesquicentennial celebration of baxter county arkansas this year march 24th of this month this is this is march right now march 24th 1873 uh, baxter county arkansas became its own entity as a county and I live in the county, and so um, we're getting ready to have a nice big celebration March 24th here on the Baxter County lawn on Friday afternoon from 2 to two to 4 o'clock. And we're going to have a little ceremony and have some fun out there. Go upstairs and have some cake and look at some artifacts. Have a great time here. Baxter County and the Ozarks isn't the only one having a sesquicentennial. Hey, if somebody else is having a celebration on their county, uh, let me know. Email me. We'll mention it and give them a hey there and shout out to them. Um, the next one would be Stone County, Arkansas. They're also celebrating 
their sesquicentennial. I like saying that name, sesquicentennial. Some people kind of stammer on it and stumble, but it's just a cool word, sesquicentennial. It's 150 years for Stone County. Uh, shout out to them. Congratulations. Apparently, they had a really nice concert celebrating some things down there uh, this past weekend. Rock solid, of course. Stone County at 150. Uh, at 150. Foundation for our future. Congratulations. Wow. Pretty cool. Pretty cool beans. Um, history of Bull Shoals Dam. I am getting ready to do a lecture not this weekend, but next weekend, I'm going to be doing a lecture at the right by the Bull Shoals Dam. Above the Bull Shoals Dam, there's a vis dam. There's a visitor center. It's called the Jim Gaston Visitor Center. I am going to be there from 9:30 to 12, and I am going to be lecturing on the history of Bull Shoals Dam. I have a ton of pictures that I've digitized. We are going to walk through some old photographs. We're going to see black and white photographs. We're going to see black and white photographs who are that's now colorized that we've been working on. We're putting them together. Uh, I did something like I did a little taste of this last year. Oh, last summer, Shepherd of the Hills. I did a little taste of what was going on with the Bull Shoals Dam and some of the cemeteries there. I did uh, two lectures at the Baxter County Library last year on the project there, Bull Shoals Dam. We are assembling a few more pictures that'll be a little bit more than what we have shown in the past. And that will be at the Jim Gaston Visitor Center. We're gonna have a great time there. I am going to be there. It's gonna be longer than this right here, but I'm gonna be there from 9.30 to noon. Oh my goodness, 9.30 to noon. Can I talk that much? Probably so, <laughs> probably can. <laughs> So 9.30 to noon, we're going to be there at the Gaston Visitor Center, and that is going to be March, let me pull that up a little bit larger, March 25th, 2023. Oh, yeah, that's going to be fun. Um, coming up, if you want to experience some history, North Fork Pioneer Day, Saturday, May 20th, 2023. It'll be done uh, all the way, it starts at the Wolf House and goes all the way down the street through North Fork. They have a parade. Um have a great time there. There is going to be some historical reenactors, and we even have a kill boat coming in because on the Ozarks, on the White River, and the other rivers throughout through here, to get up here in the 1810s, the 20s, the 30s, um, we didn't have steamboats plowing through here till like 1848. We we depended on flat boats and steamboats, uh, flat boats and kill boats, and so we're going to have some. We're going to have a a kill boat that's going to be pulled up here. There's a group down in uh, Little Rock, Arkansas, and they are going to be up here and they're going to show off their kill boat. Uh, there's going to be other people that are going to do primitive arts anywhere from making soap. Uh, there was one guy here last, two years ago or last year. He was making uh, bows, native bows for bows and arrows. And so uh, they had people who knew their new herbs, Ozark herbs, and how to do different things there. It's going to be a great time there. And so I encourage you to Pioneer Days, May 20th. Hey, it's going to be a little warm there. You can enjoy the spring, the summer. We're, it'll feel like summer probably, but it'll be springtime there and we'll have a good time. It'll be at the Jacob Wolf House. I want to say something about Jacob Wolf. Jacob Wolf was one, one of the originals that moved up the White River to Norfolk, Arkansas. And before it was Norfolk, it was actually called Liberty. And if you get up there, take a look at the Jacob Wolf House. This is the Jacob Wolf House. I took this picture, oh, a few years back. Uh, it is now under the authority of the state heritage here in Arkansas. Uh, there is a gentleman who is in charge of overseeing it. He is, his name is Marlon Mowdy. This gentleman has put the work and dedication in. Uh, historians can be proud of what this man has done and getting things documented for the Jacob Wolf House. We are going to go there and do a couple videos. I've already talked with Marlon. We're going to go there and uh, we're going to shoot some videos the last part of April and also into May. And we are going to walk through and see the things that have been documented at the Jacob Wolf House. It is the oldest 
oh my goodness, I don't have it written on paper, but I'm going to shoot this off the top of my head. It is the oldest two-story dog trot public facility structure in the United States. That is documented, and that's the Jacob Wolf House. So you want to see something historic? Here it is. Oh, let's take a look at this picture here. This is upstairs. So if you want to, uh, they also had a courtroom up here. Uh, but if and downstairs they had a they had the store they had the clerk's clerk's office uh some cool history took place here let's there's another picture there yeah this is so cool i think you'll i think you'll really enjoy this and so that's uh if you don't get a chance to do any other time come to norfolk parking's going to be a premium there probably <laughs> but ah uh, just something more to enjoy at norfolk and Here's another thing I want to uh, mention also. We have Dr. Brooks Blevins and Caitlin McConnell. They are going to be here at the Baxter County Library in Mountain Home, Arkansas from 2 to 4. They are going to start, they were going to discuss their new books and lecture on their new books. Caitlin, she has something called Passport uh, to the Ozarks. This is her second volume. And you come there, come with money in hand. She will sign this right. If you want to learn about the Ozarks and different things, this young lady can write stories. She's got beautiful pictures on there. And I'm going to link, leave a link down below to her Facebook page that you can follow her. Um, she also has a website called Ozarks Alive. This lady does an excellent job. And I will tell you what, in the years to come, you're going to be amazed at some of the things that she pulls off in some of the interviews. She is catching the transition of from one generation to the other. And she's catching, I'm just going to say it. She's catching the people who are, have put in the time and the effort to develop different things about the culture of the Ozarks today. And she's catching that in story form and in pictures. And before these people pass away, man, I just don't want to say, but, yeah, before they pass away. I'm just going to say that. There they go. I said it. I said it. And so um, then we have Dr. Brooks Blevins. Uh, he has this book, his newest book come, coming out. It's called Up South in the Ozarks. And he is going to be lecturing on that also at the Baxter County Library. Um, let me get, I got a library. I have an Ozark library. Do you have a library? I have an Ozark library. And so he has written a lot of books, but I want to show you, this is the history of the Ozarks volume one, volume two, and volume three. I will leave a link down below of this video. Give me a day or so for his books. If you not have not read history of the Ozarks, I encourage you just, just, just get volume one. Just start out with volume one. Um, for those who are watching this, you cannot afford the, these volumes. Go to your library and tell them these are history books that, you're, that our library needs. Tell your library to order these books. These books are excellent books on the Ozarks. Um, they're very detailed. They're, they're annotated. They're resourced. Um, the resources in there are, are beautiful. And so I'm just telling you, you need to get those books. You need to read them. So while we're doing that, I'm looking at here my bookshelf, here are two more books. I'm just going to go ahead and mention these. This is the Butterfield Mail Company Stagecoach Trail Across Arkansas, 1858-1861. And then here's Butterfield's Over Overland Mail Company Steamboats. These two is volume one. I have volume one and volume two. Ba -bum. These books are written by Bob Crossman down near Conway, Arkansas. Um, these are just not, these are beautiful hard covers. I think you can get soft covers too. You can get the hard covers, but I will tell you what. He has put the money and the effort into them. And these need to be read. This puts Arkansas in context. This puts steamboats in... I love steamboats. This puts steamboats in context. They are full color. If he, if he can get color into them, he's doing color. He's got maps. He's got steamboats. 
some you know you got black and white pictures here too but he has spared no effort in researching these um, excellent books i think these should be in every library not just in arkansas i think these should be in the libraries um that are associated by a river anywhere in the united states that has steamboats you can launch off and do other investigations but i believe these books are pertinent for arkansas and the ozarks they are that good because they bring a lot of things into context about steamboats the mail uh, even if you're not in arkansas um, on the arkansas river on the white river these bring a lot of things into context into these years of 1850, 1858 to 1861. Context, context, context. And that's what you can learn from those right there. Uh, let's, let's see, what else do we have right here? I wanna show, oh, before I leave, I have mentioned this before. I wanna just go ahead and give you a taste. This is a portion of the map from Rush, Arkansas, down to the mouth of the Buffalo River into the White River. So this is Rush, Arkansas. I got a hold of these maps and did some digital scans. These maps are from the Corps of Engineers drawings and they are in Corps of Engineer books, official records. So I have taken these maps out of the, unfolded them in the official records, which are still attached in there and they start folding out. This map was, was almost three feet long and it kept folding out. And when I got this book from 18, it was an 1896 um, official report. I started looking at it and it has the detail of the official report. Then I opened up the map gently and started unfolding it. And then we digitally scanned those. We digitally scanned that, I believe in 2015, uh, my son was at University of Arkansas and got a chance to look at it, at the book for the first time. And I, when I saw that, I thought, I got to scan that map and so made arrangements and got a hold of that book and had it interlibrary loaned over to where I was at and boom, we digitally scanned that thing. And so here we go. That's, that is, let's pull this up large. Here it is. Isn't that beautiful? This is Rush, Arkansas. We'll talk a little bit about the history of Rush, Arkansas. Uh, had a mining camp there in the late 18. Uh, it started around the late 1800s, boy, 1900, man, that thing started booming. And it kind of went to bust by the time of World War I was up and over with. Um, had up to 5,000 men working these mines, and they were shipping ore down the Buffalo River. Uh, this is, here is Rush. Now, from Rush down to the mouth, it's 24.2 miles, 22.4 miles, excuse me. Uh, down there and also and here's the end of it i just i'm going to show you the beginning and the end of the map this is the buffalo fork of the white river emptying into the white river and so this is this is the beauty i love this one i love this one you can still see some of the markings here i've i'm taking and working the maps and so i can just have a black and white map so we can see the detail of these maps and we're going to get into detail of these maps and we're going to have a lot of fun um oh there was another question before I, before we leave here there's another question has to do with dowsing here it is this is my big slingshot and <laughs> so um does it work all the time if you hold your mouth right that's all I'm going to say. And so I have some people that just sent me some emails that just had a fit that I mentioned dowsing in the Ozarks. Folks, it's part of the heritage and culture. You don't agree. You don't, you don't believe it works. That's fine. It's part of the heritage. And so I am not ashamed. And I'm going to leave that video up. I'm not ashamed of doing that because it was part of the culture and what people did in the past for finding water, whether you believe it works or not, that's what happened and that's what they did here. And so I wanted to document the dowsing and I'm not, a, and I'm not sorry that I did it, I did it. So there we go. So there's, there's more than one person didn't like it, but that's okay, I, I don't care. <laughs> and we're gonna go ahead and do one of the, our last thing right here. 
we're going to talk about what we were promoting here from Cabela's. It's our Trapper's uh, Trowel 22 inch cold road steel sharpened blade. Bum, ba, ba. It's a wonderful little tool. I have one right here. So, uh, hey, if you ever go to the Crater of Diamonds, excellent tool right here. There you go. You want to go to Crater of Diamonds and down in Murfreesboro, Arkansas? This is what you need to buy. $12.99. Uh, they're at Cabela's. And I had someone ask me, how rich am I getting off of this? I'm going to tell you how much money I make off this. I am not doing this to make tons of money. I make 33 cents per sale. After taxes, I'm taking around 20 cents. So I could be selling other things here on the channel. But I'm telling you what, this is a beautiful little tool. It's a perfect tool here in the Ozarks. Uh, because of the sh of the blade here, it's a nice thick blade. It's sharp. It gets dulled. You can sharpen it again. Because in the Ozarks, we do not have deep black dirt. We have a matrix of dirt and rock. <laughs> and so this can dig into whatever you're doing. If you're working, doing cemetery work, which I do a lot of cemetery work, this is what you need to use. If you're doing gardening, and I've used this before in the past even when i was a kid i used this in gardening i had a trapper's tool um, it's an excellent tool so if you do gardening if you're in the garden if you have a flower bed and you need to break things up if you want to chop up your compost this is nice and sharp it'll chop your compost 12.99 at cabela's i will have the link below uh, in about 24 hours after this live stream i will have all the links below and you can go on from there I want to thank you so much, everyone, for coming by and stopping and visiting us today at Ozarks History. We've had a wonderful time. Thank you so much for going down below, hitting the closed caption, smashing the subscribe and like button, and we will see you very soon. Um, it's going to be about another week or so because I have uh, some family celebrations to coming, coming up, uh, but we will be diving into the Buffalo Fork of the White River here on Ozark's History, and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.